Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube and we are doing application of complex integrals and we are learning type 1. Type 1 means we are learning how to solve the improper integral. Integral minus infinity to infinity, polynomial divided by polynomial where the degree of the denominator is at least, at least 2 more than the degree of the numerator. And the denominator should not become zero when you plug in any real number. And the limit should be from minus infinity to infinity. Anyway, you already know the method. Now let's go for one little bit difficult question. But before we start, to calculate residues, to calculate residues, we have three methods. Point number one, the series method. That is exactly how we found the residues in the first video. And in the second video, we learned a shortcut. That is, we learned how to use limits to evaluate the residue. And that is one of the most systematic method. Now, one more method you have to learn. If you have a function in the form polynomial by polynomial, and if you have a simple pole, then the residue can be evaluated very, 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 very easily by finding the limit for function divided by the derivative. It's a very special case and you cannot use it if you have anything other than polynomial by polynomial. Okay, now another thing that you have to be very good with is how to convert complex numbers into polar form. In case you do not remember, I'll explain it properly. Imagine you have a complex number root 3 plus i. This complex number can be converted into r e power i theta. r will be, look at this, root 3 plus i means the coordinate root 3 comma 1. So it's bound to be in the first quadrant. Imagine this is the complex number. So can you see this length will be r and this angle will be theta. The length is given by root under x square plus y square. That means root 3 the whole square plus 1 square in this particular example. And the angle, the angle is given by a standard chart. If the complex number is in the first quadrant like this, the angle will be tan inverse mod y by x. Mod means the positive value. In the second quadrant, suppose we have a question something like uh, minus 1 plus i root 3. Can you see this corresponds to the coordinate minus 1 root 3. And minus 1 root 3 will be in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, the length is still given by the same formula, root under real part squared plus imaginary part squared. And the angle is given by pi minus tan inverse positive value of y divided by x. And if the complex number is in the third quadrant or fourth quadrant, no need to buy hurt anything. The angle will be negative of this stuff, the same stuff. And here, it will be negative of this stuff. So, that will be minus tan inverse mod y by x. Now, if the complex number is something like 7. 7 means 7 plus 0i. And it is on the x-axis. So, if the complex number is in the x-axis, then the angle will be 0 degree or 0 radian. If the complex number is in the positive y-axis, then it will be 90 degree. And if it is over here, you have to put 180 degree. And if it is below, in the negative part of the y-axis, then you have to take minus 5 by 2. Okay, I will give you one example. Suppose they ask you, 1 plus i, the whole power, 1 by 4. Now look at this. Every number will have 4 fourth roots. I will give you an example. 16. 16 has 2 square roots. Because 
if you equate it to x you will get a quadratic equation and this quadratic equation will be balanced by two characters namely 4 and minus 4 similarly a complex number will have four fourth roots how many fourth roots four fourth roots and if you want to find the fourth roots the first thing to do is you to convert this into modulus argument form how do you calculate the modulus very simple root under one square plus one square that will be root two so i'm going to write root two e to the power i theta now we have to calculate theta how do you calculate theta you have to convert this into coordinate 1 plus i will be 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 1 is in the first quadrant in the first quadrant theta is given by tan inverse positive value of 1 by 1 that means tan inverse 1 that will be pi by 4 so can you see i can convert this into the modulus argument form now the next thing to do is you have to generalize this angle and generalizing the angle is like very simple all you have to do is you have to add multiples of 360 it means in every 360 degree rotation you will reach the same point so you have to put 2k pi 2k pi means you know 2 pi is 360 degree so 2 pi multiplied by k k means it can be 1 it can be 2 it can be 3 it represents each circle plus pi by 4 and now you put the whole power 1 by 4 now if you want you can take pi common etc etc now plug in k equal to 0 1 2 3 you will get all the four values of or the fourth roots of this 1 plus i the whole power 1 by 4 I'll give you one more example. Suppose we have root 3 plus i the whole power 1 by 7. What will you do? You convert it into r e power i theta. Then r e power 2k pi plus theta. And you put k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, now look at this. We have minus 1 to the power 1 by 6. Don't forget minus 1 means minus 1 plus 0 i that means the coordinate minus 1 comma 0 it is in the negative x axis so can you see the modulus is 1 the distance is 1 and i told you if it is here 0 degree if it is here pi by 2 if it is over here pi and here minus pi by 2 so can you see that is why they wrote it as r e power i pi now they are generalizing and they will plug in the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we are ready for an extra important question. Okay, now copy the question. It is a real integral. And you can see that the degree of the numerator is 0, the degree of the denominator is 4. So definitely the degree of the denominator is at least 2 more than the degree of the numerator. Now I kept some space, you know the usual drama, I will ask you to write, consider the given integral, 1 divided by z square plus 1, z power 4 plus 1, where c is the contour, including the real axis from minus r to r, and the part of the circle mod z equal to r above the x axis etc etc. And then we will say, this integral can be written as, minus r to r the same stuff but it is real axis so i am writing x plus integral c plus what do you mean by c plus c plus means the contour which is above the x axis and then i will write by cauchy's lemma this integral will vanish and this integral will become minus infinity to infinity if r tends to infinity in your examination, it will be very, very nice if you write Cauchy's lemma in a box. Okay, now after the usual drama, what will I do? I will find the singularity. And that is exactly why I taught you how to convert and find the fourth roots. So, how do you get the singularity? We have to equate the denominator to zero. 
when i equated it to zero can you see i got the fourth root i converted it into modulus argument form and here we go we have to plug in k equal to zero one two three you can put any four consecutive numbers even you can put like five six seven eight anyway you need a calculator so the values are z equal to e to the power i I have to put k equal to zero, i pi the whole power one by four, z equal to e to the power. Now I'll put k equal to one, so two pi plus pi three pi, i three pi the whole power one by four, z equal to e to the power i five pi the whole power one by four, e to the power i seven pi by four. Okay, now what you do is you draw the contour. You know the contour is from minus r to r, and I hope you still remember the conditions. The denominator should never ever become zero in the real axis. That's great. It's not zero. So this is like e power i pi by four. Pi by four means forty-five degree. So the complex number will be somewhere here. And this is three pi by four. Three pi by four will be one thirty-five degree. So the complex number is somewhere over here. So these two complex numbers are above. And I know five pi by four will be below because it's like two twenty-five degree. Ignore, ignore. Okay. Now comes the most important part. In the beginning itself, I told you we have to calculate the residue. So I'm going to write r one plus equal to residue at z equal to e to the power i pi by 4 now look at this we have polynomial divided by polynomial did you notice the question the question is polynomial even though one is a polynomial of degree 0 we can call it a polynomial so polynomial by polynomial in the beginning of the video i told you we have three methods to calculate residue the series method the limit method and one method that i showed you in this video which will work only for polynomial by polynomial so we have a simple pole and the numerator is 1 so i'm going to write 1 as such we have to plug in the limit so limit z tends to e power i pi by 4 1 divided by the derivative and plug it and you'll get 1 by 4 One by e to the power i three pi by four. That will be one by four e to the power minus i three pi by four. Now comes the second residue. That will be residue at z equal to e power i three pi by four. So look at this. This is a very 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 special problem because we have polynomial by polynomial. and when you have polynomial by polynomial and a simple pole which is above the x axis the method is write the numerator as such differentiate the denominator and plug it anyway i got the value 1 by 4 e to the power minus i 9 pi by 4 and as always i am going to write the integral the integral that i constructed the integral that i constructed is 1 divided by z power 4 plus 1 dz is equal to 2 pi i uh, and the sum that is 1 by 4 e power minus i 3 pi by 4 plus 1 by 4 e to the power minus i 9 pi by 4 now comes a test whether you know complex numbers properly or not What is e power minus i theta? We learned long, 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 long back. Cos theta minus i sine theta. So we'll have this as cos three pi by four minus i sine three pi by four plus cos nine pi by four minus sine i sine nine pi by four. And you can do the calculation. I got it like pi by root two. Strongly recommending use a calculator to evaluate cos three pi by four, but when you plug this into your calculator, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Otherwise, you won't get the answer. 
okay now we have to go for another very important problem so i'll be back very soon with the next question and that will be the last question in type 1 so till then my friends bye